What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how to make floating shelves. Um, but you might be thinking, you already showed us how to do floating shelves. And you're correct. But in this video I'm going to show you how to do corner floating shelves using a different method to make them stronger um, and bigger. Wow. Okay, so I measured my triangle in this uh, quarter inch sheet of plywood and cut my first triangle out. I'm going to need four of these. So once I had one triangle cut out, I basically traced it on the sheet of plywood again and made duplicates of the same triangle that I had. Then I moved over to the miter saw to cut my supports. This is basically what's going to go inside of the triangle. So it's the skeleton and then there is the shell. And this is the skeleton right now being made. skeleton that you see is going to get hung onto the wall and the shell is just going to slide right in. Makes for easy insulation. These little scores that you see being cut uh, are going to be for support that's going to go inside of the shell of the triangle. Okay, so I have everything ready to go. Uh, everything is cut as you can see, uh, except for the front. I'm going to use this board right here because it's really nice, so it's going to give it a good uh, front. Um, and I actually went ahead and got this new toy, it's nail gun. I'm going to go ahead and use this to nail this front one to the top and the bottom pieces. And then these three pieces, pieces right here are going to be separated. And this is what's going to connect to the wall. Um, and then we'll slide the shelf in these pieces. Would that make sense? So I use pocket holes and screws to connect the skeleton together. Um, it's just going to be quick, simple, and it's going to be a strong uh, joint. Okay, so I'm ready to cut my uh, front piece here and I just need to make the angles to go along with the angles of the shelf thing. And according to the computer, I need to cut one at 54.8 and the other one at 35.2. I think that's a two. Um, so hopefully that works. If not, I gotta cut some more. So you can see all my uh, faces are cut, I'm good to go. I just need to glue it and nail them in. And then I'll come with the sander, even this out, put some wood filler where he needs it to hide all my mistakes. And then we get to stain.
So I'm done sanding uh, both of these pieces. They are ready for stain. I'm gonna go with this uh, classic gray stain, which is my favorite. Um, and I'm gonna use the preconditioner so I don't get blotch spots on when I apply my stain. Not sure if I mentioned it or not, but these are not for me. They're actually for a family member. He remodeled his house and he asked me to do these for uh, some part of his uh, house. I'll try to get pictures and stuff of it and put them somewhere so you can see. It's been a couple of days, the shelves are finally done. Um, you'll notice that they are darker than the stain that you just saw me apply. Um, that is because we changed the stain to dark walnut instead of the classic gray. Um, it just went along with their, you know, their house fitter. So I just gotta go deliver these, install them, and then get some pictures in and show you guys when they're uh, up on the wall. <laughs> 